Sat yoga is scientific yoga. Its understanding of the real is based on quantum physics. Its use of the symbolic is based on the science of semiotics. Its understanding of the imaginary is based on complexity theory, chaos theory, psychoanalysis. The symbolic is further fleshed out by the insights of Jung and the post-Jungians of the archetypal dimension. All of this is congruent with religion, but does not depend upon religious ideas. And religious ideas without a scientific understanding of the true nature of those concepts that are clothed in mythological form create delusions and dead ends in efforts to reach any god that is composed within the imaginary register of consciousness or even the symbolic. Quantum physics teaches, and it's quite clear, it's, it's irrefutable, that there are two apparent levels of reality. The quantum reality, which is the reality, and then what they call the classical or Newtonian reality, which is simply an illusion created by minds that have had their quantum wave function collapsed into a miscognition of quantum waves as material objects in space and time. But quantum physics has proven that there are no such thing as material objects, nor space, nor time. And it is only the mind that once it is caught in that level of its own consciousness that is engaged with linguistic chatter and the creation of imaginary melodramas and fantasies of life as a human person, the true real that underlies the imagination is lost. And because the ego mind is an artifact of this so-called classical reality, which is really simply delusion, known as the phenomenal plane, the ego cannot but multiply its fantasies of the type of life it would like to lead in the phenomenal plane. And because consciousness is inherently infinite, it will continue emitting fantasies that will produce ever more conflicts and indecision about what it wants to do in life until life itself eliminates most of those options. But whatever option one actually chooses in life, which depends upon karmic forces far greater and deeper than those of the ego mind that thinks it is the desirer of one of those, nonetheless, the fate of the ego is such that it always ends up that one wants out that one realizes that the fantasy was futile, self-defeating, and leads only to a hell realm of no exit, of a suffering from which there is no cease until the ego itself ceases its production of its imaginary environment. And the ego's environment begins as its psychological environment within its own unconscious layers that then get projected out as phenomenal interactions with others with whom one has either desire or fear, hatred, repulsion, disgust, or any of the spectrum of emotional reactivities 
that produce the different colors of the phenomenal plane, its positive and negative charges that produce the apparent motion of time and space. And thus only a mind that has disciplined itself to integrate those opposite charges and to not be taken in by the imagination's ability to produce mirages that make the grass always look greener on the next hill over and that produce dissatisfaction no matter how good one's life situation is and produce a nostalgia for a past that never was or a future that never can be. And one can never settle in to what is real here and now, which is the only portal of access to truth, to power, to love, to all the things that one was looking for through one's imagination can only be attained by shutting down the imaginary and ending one's symbolic critique of that imaginary and bringing one's attention home to the real that never appears as either a subtle dream field or an outer apparent phenomenal world, but is the source of the sense of I. And until the attention is trained to return to the source of the I, to break through its apparent worlds in which it seems to live, whether it is an I of a physical body or an I of a mind that thinks of itself as a separate individual observer of some external reality, a solipsistic I, or whether it is the real, in which case all the apparent worlds dissolve and are recognized as dreams in a collective field that itself has no reality beyond its own delusional capacity to create a dream but no dreams created at the individual level because that level itself is illusion. None of those dreams can be sustained. And what is ultimately revealed is the mind of God beyond all appearance, beyond all difference, beyond all separation, beyond all otherness, and therefore beyond the illusion of the corporeal, beyond the illusion of the symptoms of suffering, beyond the illusion that there is anyone who even has the capacity to suffer or enjoy. But it takes courage to attain the supreme real because it means releasing oneself from the illusion of attachment to others in the phenomenal plane that seem to have biological reality. And from those romantic fantasies of adventure that the ego creates for itself in order to overcome and compensate its sense of lack and inferiority, to become a hero, to become someone that others will recognize as having overcome that lack from which all egos suffer. But all of these games at 
whatever level of sophistication they are played, are futile wastes of our life energy. And all the while, the life-giving energy, the wisdom to redream worlds, the power of love that can break through negativity and heal all suffering, is being overlooked by the mind that is looking in all the wrong places for its salvation. The time has come to stop looking in all those wrong places and to stop looking from the perspective of an ego in a phenomenal world and to stop pretending you are simply a body that is living for the enjoyment, the comfort zone for that body, or a mind that simply wants the soothing sense of certainty that is always an illusion. It is time that we enter the real. because the phenomenal plane that has been the comfort zone of the ego is itself now in a state of collapse and will soon not support life. And so there is a race against the illusion of time in which we will either overcome those apparent laws of nature and of psychology that hold back our ability to liberate ourselves from the delusion of destruction and bring about a planetary miracle of rebirth, or we will fall into that same holocaust of thermonuclear conflagration that the world is hurtling toward full speed. It is only that mastery of the principles of quantum physics that include what the quantum physicists do not understand, which is the source of the observer, of the consciousness that has the power to transform the waves into particles and the particles into waves that can produce new forms untouched by the illusion of a past that controls and conditions its trajectory and bring about a new beginning. But if we are stuck within this illusion of space and time as creatures helpless, and ever more hopeless in the grip of the revelation of the end times that are bringing their messages in ever more imperative ways that cannot be denied. Then we cannot see through that omega point to the new alpha, and we will not be able to have the power to go through the eye of the needle and become co-creators of that new world. And we can do nothing for all of those we are attached to and thinking we must be loyal to, even though we know we can do nothing for them because of our own delusion and hopeless helplessness. But we remain stuck in the inertia of that futility and vanity of the ego's life, simply out of fear to discover the real that requires accepting the absolute unknownness 
of that quantum reality that has no landmarks, no limits. and no capacity to grasp by the instrument of thought. And until we have learned to master that higher instrument of presence, of silent awareness, of that infinite, all-containing, absolute, that is the real. And until all consciousness and all the frames of reference of the ego that produce all of our conflicts and suffering have been surrendered to that absolute, it is not possible to do anything to change the trajectory of the fate of the world. or to end even an iota of one's suffering. Because the ever-growing darkness and tamasic nature of the end of Kali Yuga becomes so dense, so chaotic, so confusing, that the mind that is attached to the phenomenal plane becomes contaminated by those impossible pressures of collective anxiety, dread, terror, dismay, that produce an internal chaos and complexity that can no longer be simplified if the ultimate center, that is the God self, has not been reached and stabilized to enable us to bring all of that chaos to subside and be integrated as pure information into that infinite intelligence that one must have attained through the surrender of the ego identity. But if one acts from the egoic perspective and believes in that frame of reference, then the soul is lost. It is this that constitutes the final judgment, and it is a self-judgment upon one's purity of heart, which enables one to let go of what one knows is false, but which one cannot let go of because of one's lust. Whether that lust is for sexual pleasure, domination, attachment, the sense of being someone good in the eyes of another, creative, some ambition of superiority, who can bathe in the limelight of others' applause. But whatever sort of pornography that the ego is attached to is one's cause of demise. And only freedom from any such illusory power can bring us to redemption and enable us to redeem this fallen, illusory world. May the Sat Yogis have the integrity and the power and the clarity and the purity of heart to achieve the aim that brought us together. For the sake of all sentient beings.